Hey friends, it's Peggy Hall back with you from the healthyamerican.org. I called the Synergy Shipping Company and that's the owner of the Dolly, which was in this uh, accident in the Port of Baltimore. And I want to clear up a couple of things because there are still some, uh, I don't know, rumors floating around social media. Gee, why would that happen on social media? And I want to play for you the phone call that I made to Synergy because I wanted to find out the names of the pilots that were actually piloting the ship, captaining the ship, the master of that ship. And I'm going to share with you exactly what they said, or maybe a better way of saying it is what they did didn't say. And before I do that, let me just share my screen because a lot of you are making the connection between a painting by Salvador Dali called The Broken Bridge. And this is what it looks like. And I actually went, did a little digging here. And this is from the archives of the Dali Museum and or the yes, the Dolly uh, dot org. And it says in the classical vein, this work reflects Dolly's continuing interest in theatrical scenes and ballet design. Wearing the Catalan red Barantina, Dali places himself at the bottom of the bridge in the Amperdin Plain as if he had drifted off to sleep. In his dream, the ruined bridge transforms into a stairway upon which allegorical features drift upwards towards heaven. During his classical period, such angelic figures replace the anguished figures of previous years and Dali's technique begins to change as well. Turning away from his highly detailed, thinly applied layers of oil, Dali starts to apply a looser classical glazing technique used by the great masters such as Rembrandt. So that is the description of this painting. And it is very interesting that the name of this container ship was called the Dolly. Now I'm going to do a second video for you talking about the ship's owner because there was some you know, dispute over that as well. And I want to share with you some of the research that I uncovered looking into that. But suffice it to say that the owner of the Dolly is not Angela Chow's shipping company called The Foremost, and should I say the late Angela Chow, because she died in a very tragic and, dare I say, um, strange accident when she was so-called piloting a Tesla. And apparently she was having difficulty putting the car in the correct gear and it was in reverse. And she went into a pond at the back of her home and she placed a call to a friend and apparently to uh, also the um, emergency responders. And sadly and tragically, they got there too late. So that is a story I want to dig into as well. But I did a video explaining that foremost is not the owner of the Dolly, that it's Synergy. And it's so strange because I had somebody, maybe even more than one person, leave a comment in that video saying, Peggy, you have your facts wrong. Foremost is not the owner. And it's like, oh my gosh, the, the video was about Foremost not being the owner. So it troubles me on a couple of levels that number one, are people so gripped with fear that they actually cannot hear what it is I'm saying, or do they have a preconceived notion and they just didn't watch the video and they gave a comment before they actually watched it? Because the point of the video was that Foremost was not the owner. So it's very strange to me that there would be a comment saying that I got my facts wrong when in fact, my facts were correct. Leaving a comment on a video that you haven't watched is like leaving a review for a restaurant where you haven't had a meal. So how do you like them apples? All right. What I'm going to do is show you how I tracked down the owner and what I did and when I called and exactly what happened. So let me bring this up for you here. And I find it very, very interesting that this Synergy group has very little information about the accident. So let me share my screen again. Actually, I have the phone call up for you as well. Let me do this. We will go to uh, Zoom. I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. This is Synergy Group, and it is owned by Indians. And I went on to, so you can see here, they're all about sustainability and the green revolution. So that, there you are, driven by safety and sustainability transformative digitization. 
and uh, safe and effective. Yes, here we go. So I went into the media and I looked on their press releases. It's interesting that they have nothing on their homepage about this accident. And here, the first response that they had uh, was on March 26th. And it says the owners and managers of the Singapore flagged container ship Dali or Dali report that the vessel collided with one of the pillars of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, Baltimore, whilst under pilotage with two pilots on board. Now, we never got the name of those pilots, and I will leave a link for you in my Substack for this if you'd like to dig deeper. It's peggyhall.substack.com. They did a follow-up update on March 27th, one day later, and it said that we confirm the safety of all crew members and the two pilots aboard the Dolly with one minor injury reported. The injured crew member has been treated and discharged from the hospital. Unfortunately, the incident also impacted those who were on the Francis Scott Key Bridge at the time. And based on reports from the Baltimore Fire Chief and ABC News and other media outlets, there have been so far two rescued from the water, including one person with serious injuries. I'm going to do a follow up video with you about the names and some of the uh, witnesses. And I'd like you to uh, go on this journey with me. See if you draw the same conclusion that these things just don't add up. It doesn't pass the smell test. And there is something very fishy about all of this. Now, the latest update that they had was on March 21st. At the time of this recording, it is April 1st. So several more days have gone by, and we still don't have any information regarding the names of the crew members and the names of the pilots that were actually on board. And we still have not gotten any released information about the names of the harbor pilots in the port of Baltimore. I did an entire video about the uh, those that actually are uh, trained and experienced will help guide these vessels in and out of the ports. And we are not getting the names of those two pilots either. So I wanna uh, just read this to you and then I will play for you snippets of my phone call because I wanna know the names of these pilots. So here we go. Update on March 28th. We extend our deepest sympathies to the families of the two people lost following the incident in the Baltimore Harbor on March 26. We remain hopeful that continued efforts will lead to the recovery of workers who remain missing. That's highly unlikely at this date. One of the vessel's crew members who was injured returned to the vessel on Wednesday after being treated. Again, there's no name. The ship managers have activated their mental health team to provide trauma counseling for crew members feeling distressed and that service will continue. All right, we have no names of these crew members. And then uh, let me stop, actually, uh, it's that's all it says. It says the NTSB boarded the vessel on Wednesday, collected documents, voyage data recorder extracts and other evidence as part of their investigation. The NTSB also began interviewing crew members. Why don't we have the names of these crew members? We will continue to cooperate with investigators throughout this process. And then it says we deeply regret this incident and the problems it has caused for the people of Baltimore and the region's economy that relies on this vitally important port. So I scrolled down a little bit more and it said, for further information, please contact in Europe, Pat Adamson and in the USA, Daryl Wilson. Well, that's exactly what I did. I contacted Daryl Wilson and I have the phone recording of this and I'm going to play uh, Daryl answering the phone to establish that indeed I had this phone call with him, but I realized that I didn't let him know that I was recording the call. So just to be um, safe and effective, I'm not going to play everything that he says, but I do have a transcript of what he says, and I will read that to you as well. And uh, let's do this. I'm going to play this for you. And here we go. Hello, Daryl Wilson. Hey, Daryl. I'm uh, covering the story of the uh, shipping container incident in Baltimore, and I could not get the name of the uh, master who was piloting the boat. Okay. Now, what Daryl says in response is, I transcribed this, no, we're not releasing any personal information on the crew members right now, ma'am. He was very polite. Uh, and then... Let's hear. No, we're not releasing uh, any personal information about crew members right now, ma'am. Okay. Uh, when is that going to be released? And then he goes on to say, I'm going 
to have to check with the authorities and the agents who are conducting the investigation? Um, I would have to check with the authorities. The agents being posted here conducting the investigation. Okay, so I should. I'm sorry? No, no, I was clearing my throat, sorry. Okay, so I should check with them. And then he goes on to say, you can, but I'm saying, I'm letting you know that the names have not been released. I, who work for the company, don't even have their names. And then he said, he went on to say, uh, are you, let me make sure we're talking about the same people. Are you talking about the ship's crew or the harbor pilots? You can, I'm, but I'm, I'm saving you the trouble, and I'm just letting you know that the names have not been released. I, I, I who work for the company, don't even have the names. Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought that these documents were public in terms of um, the employees and so forth. Okay, and this is when he says, are you, let me make sure we're talking about the same people. Are you talking about the ship's crew or the harbor pilots? You, uh, let me make sure we're talking about the, the right people. Are you talking about the ship's crew or the harbor pilots? Uh, both. I would, I'm wondering about the harbor pilots and also who was piloting the dolly at the time of the incident. And then he goes on to say, okay, I can only speak on behalf of the dolly but he actually doesn't give me any info. Okay, I, I can only speak on behalf of the dolly. And, and, and then he says, I can only speak on behalf of the dolly. He is not releasing the names of the crew. I don't okay. need that on myself. Okay. Regarding the pilots, um, I don't know them. You have to reach out to the Baltimore um, pilots office and and wow. talk to them and see if they release the names or if they're going to. I, I, again, I just can't speak for them. Okay, then he goes on to say Synergy is not releasing the names of the crew. I don't even have them myself. Regarding the harbor pilots, I don't know them. You'd have to reach out to the Baltimore Pilots Association and talk to them and see if they have released the names or if they are going to. I can't speak for them. Okay, I appreciate the information. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Bye -bye. Um, so what I did next is I actually went to the Harbor Pilots Association in Baltimore. And let me uh, pull that up for you as well. Hang on, just uh, let me grab that for you. Okay, so next I went to the Association of Maryland pilots. And these are the harbor pilots. So let me share my screen. And I find it very, very odd that on the homepage, the only thing they have related to this accident, this incident, is the thoughts and prayers of all of us at the Association of Maryland Pilots are with the families and friends who lost loved ones as a result of the March 26th tragedy. Now, they, I, I find it very, very interesting that they did not call it an accident. Words matter. They didn't say the tragic accident. I've been calling it an incident, but they're using the word tragedy. And I believe that's done intentionally to not identify it as an accident because we don't know if it was sabotage. The investigation hasn't been completed yet. So they say the March 26th tragedy at the Francis Scott Key Bridge, our thanks and deepest appreciation go to all of the first responders for their selfless efforts. So I scoured this website, friends, and I could not find anything related to a press release, related to an investigation, related to the names of the harbor pilots. And I will leave a link for you. It is very simple, mdpilots.com. I will leave that for you in my Substack. Be sure you get on that, peggyhall.substack.com. It's free. And it talks about the Chesapeake Bay, and it talks about the Port of Baltimore. It says it ranks first nationally in automobiles and light trucks, first in roll on, roll off cargo, which means they're not using cranes to remove the container ships, but they're rolling them on and off, second in imported sugar. 
Wow. And second, in exported coal, well, I'm glad to see that they're, the coal is still uh, being produced. Overall, Baltimore ranks ninth nationally in cargo volume and 11th in total tonnage. Now, some of you are going to be looking at those numbers, nine and 11, and more than 125 jobs in Maryland are related, 125,000 jobs are related to the maritime industry. So it has all of this information about the port of Baltimore. It talks about pilots who are selected. And I did an entire video for you all about the harbor pilots that get on these uh, container ships and either advise the master who is piloting the ship uh, in and out of the port or they themselves take control of the ship. So I will leave a link for you as, for that as well. I think it's fascinating. And you can hear from a harbor pilot exactly their training. They're very skilled. Nothing on this website tells me the names of these harbor pilots. And when it says contact us, which I did, I went to about us and there is no way to contact them other than writing a letter. There is no email address, there is no phone, and I have not yet sent a letter. And I find it very, very, how do I put it? I'll just say suspicious that we don't have the names of these individuals. And the reason why I'm saying this is suspicious because some of you are going to say, Peggy, it's under investigation. Of course, they're not gonna release these names. Well, how is it in these mass casualty bang bang incidents for example after the um, you know very fair and unscripted Kansas City football win we already had the names of all of the victims we had the names of the perpetrators when you see these other mass casualty events you've got images of the people that uh I mean, come on, you've got all of their mental health records. We know exactly how many bang bangs they own. We know exactly what everybody in the neighborhood thinks about them. Yet we still don't have the names of the individuals that actually were responsible for this incident, for this tragedy. I don't like them apples at all. What say you? Now stick with me, friends, because I have a second video from a Baltimore native. And I want you to hear from somebody there or who was there in terms of Baltimore, the city, the dealings. You may know that Nancy Pelosi comes from the Baltimore crime family. Oh, excuse me, what I meant to say, political family. Uh, yes, her father was the mayor of Baltimore. Her brother, who was named after Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and you know how I feel about FDR. In fact, his nickname was Rosie or Ruzi, I don't know how you pronounced it. He also was a mayor of Baltimore. The father, Nancy Pelosi's father, tried to run for governor and he was so corrupt in the you know organized crime and all of that, that even the Democrats said, we're not letting you run for governor because of all of your ties with organized crime. And there are so many strange things. Let me know in a comment if you would like me to bring you more information about this uh, sensational family and all of the uh, things that they've been involved in because it is absolutely stunning. Going on, uh, Nancy Pelosi's father was not named Pelosi, that's her husband's name, and all of the uh, criminal dealings that he's been involved in and deaths and drunk driving and all of this, I can bring that all to you. Uh, very, very strange indeed. So anyway, that's what I know about Baltimore. I've only been, uh, and that's what I know about Maryland. I've only been there once flying in and out of the airport. So I've never spent time there, but I want to bring to you what a Baltimore native is saying about all of this. Thank you everybody for being on board. I really appreciate you subscribing to the channel, leaving a comment, sharing the video. And remember, if I go missing, you can find me at my private channel, which is peggyhall.tv. It's a vault of all of my videos, all the videos that have been taken down. And I'm also uploading these as a backup over at Rumble. Also at uh, my uh, Substack, as I say, be sure that you get on that as well, peggyhall.substack.com. Thank you to the moderators that keep the chat flowing in the stream. And uh, stay tuned. I've got another video coming for you next.